friends, Krista Moreland here with Kmart Macro, and I'm really excited to introduce to you a former client of mine and now friend, Stephanie Beck. Over the last nine months, I've had the privilege of watching her work so hard, and her journey has been absolutely awe-inspiring. Like most parents, we tend to put our needs on the back burner. A lot of other things come before what we want in a day. Kids, kids sports, volunteering, school, school projects, and so, so much more. Find out how this very busy mom, mommy blogger, online marketer, marathon runner made health a priority and absolutely crushed her goals. It is so incredible. I can't wait to dive into this with her and find out how she did it. So I'm super excited to chat with you today about um, the success that you have found with dialing in your nutrition, being all kinds of things to all kinds of people and making you a priority. Mm -hmm. I know as moms and, and dads, there are a lot of busy dads out there too, um, it's really hard um, to let go of that guilt and to find that happy balance, right? Yeah. So most people come to a nutrition coach, it's because they've reached a point where they're like, okay, Something, I, I need some change, something's not happening, I need to figure this out. What was that moment for you? Do you remember what that moment was for you? I do, yeah, I was watching myself. Like I was going through the process of becoming a fitness instructor for Fit For Mom, and I look back at the pictures during my training and I just didn't feel like my body fit my personality. I just didn't feel like I could take myself serious as a fitness yeah. instructor, you know, I, I yeah. felt uncomfortable in my clothes. I thought I was eating okay, but later I found out I wasn't. And I just didn't, I just felt like a blah. I just, yeah. that's all I can say is it was like, I, I was not happy, you know, my, my husband still found me attractive, but sure. you know, that's why he married me. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, good but, husband. <laughs> yeah. But I was, I just, I didn't like myself in my clothes. Yeah. And I was getting ready to go up in a size that I was I didn't want to be in. Yeah. I was like, no, I'm I'm not pregnant and I look like I'm pregnant. I'm I'm working out, I'm running. Something should be different. Yeah. And it's almost like your effort wasn't matching mm -hmm. what you were seeing in the mirror. Exactly. Yeah, and that exactly. can be so tough because you it's not that you weren't willing to put in the work. Right. You were putting in the work, right? right? The mm -hmm. physical work. Yeah. But there was still something missing. Yeah. And a lot of times, I mean, diet is 80% of what of what we see in a day, right? Yeah. So wow, that's incredible. Yeah. And um, I love that that was something that it wasn't a scale thing. It wasn't, um, it, it was just, I want to walk the walk. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to be a fitness instructor, then I want yeah. people to look at me and respect me for that. Yeah. That's awesome. That's exactly. incredible. Yeah. I asked you this question in your um, graduation paperwork and your exit interview <laughs> from Kmore Macro. And I'm going to read it because it's a tiny bit long. Um, what behavior changes did you make throughout the process and how did that aid in your success long term? So the, the changes that I made, um, I mean, I, I had to change my relationship with food. I had to change my relationship with the scale because we all feel so overwhelmed by yeah. this number that we see and it, it, it over, just overwhelms It overshadows what you're doing. Exactly. And I knew I wasn't eating well. I mean, I, I knew I was eating well, so let me change that up. I, I knew I was eating well. I just didn't know what changes I need to make. Yeah. And I realized I was way over in carbs, way over in fat, and super low in protein. Okay. So right off the bat, I just knew that that change was going to happen. Yeah. Finding that energy balance between mm -hmm. the macros, right? Exactly. That's yeah. huge. I think a lot of people don't necessarily um, eat awful um, as far as food choices. Their choices are awful. It's just that balance is crazy because we don't know we don't have knowledge about food, exactly. and so it's hard to manage that when you just don't have the knowledge right. for it. Well, yeah. and at the same time, I remember growing up or you know, even into going into my adult life, everyone saying, well, you have to read the nutrition label. Yeah. I didn't know what that meant. Yeah, I was what like, part of the label? <laughs> like, I, I would look at calories. Which part but, counts? You know, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. I mean, I would look at calories, but as we now know, a calorie is not a calorie is not a calorie yeah. they are all treated differently your body is going to process you know as far as the change on the scale because what i went through and i'm sure a lot of you are feeling this way too is you're starting to criticize that number again like mm -hmm. why am i not losing or 
I it was like point two down and now I'm two up and what's going on yeah. here and I had a little bit of a mental breakdown and I'm sure I could find that email yeah Krista <laughs> too but finally it, it just I, I hit that wall I was like I can't look at this number and fight with it mm -hmm. I have to look at it as a guideline yeah am I yeah. drinking enough water am I getting enough sleep how hard did I work out the day before yeah to know like, okay, there's gonna be this little bit of fluctuation, but at the end of the day, I love the clothes that I'm yeah. in now. So and it's it's using the skill as um, a guide mm -hmm. versus the end point mm -hmm. of success and failure, yeah. right? So you know that if you didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night, then the skill is going to show maybe a little bit up because you didn't give your body the time to recover. If you had a tough workout, then the scale number is going to be up because you tore muscle fibers and so you have some inflammation. Yeah. So I think the cool part in your answer that you sent to me was, I have learned that when I do certain things to my body, I can expect certain things to happen on the scale. And so that gave you peace of mind with the scale and it allowed you to use the scale for what it's intended to be used for as a tool mm -hmm. versus a awful day and a good day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you took the emotion out of it. Exactly. That's yeah. awesome. The, the number on the scale does not show what kind of day I'm going to have. Um, okay, so here's the big one. There are a lot of people who are like, I cannot commit to following a nutrition plan or a workout plan or anything that has to do with my health because I don't have the time. My kids are my number one priority. Um, I, ha I own my own business. I, you know, we can make a lot of reasons why our health is not a priority. And you, I totally forgot to even mention that you do <laughs> stroller strides and running club. How did you let go of the guilt and allow yourself to make your health and this journey and working out and nutrition a priority for you? For me, it was um, listening to myself and my excuses. Like, what were my excuses? Oh, I love wine too much. Or, oh, well, there's gonna be these instances where we go out to eat and I'm just gonna fall off the wagon or what, you know, it, maybe it won't work. Like. Mm -hmm. I always felt like I was the kind of person that would see others succeed at weight loss or fitness and be like, well, that's not me. Yeah. I, I'll give it a shot, yeah. but it's not going to be me. Right. And I just hit a point and I saw a friend of mine who had seen a lot of success through this and finally yeah. I'm like, no, you know, I need to stop making this an excuse. Yeah. You know, like dive into it head on yeah. and see what this all entails. I love it. And I, for me, it was wanting to make this lifestyle change for me to then have it reflect in my child. Mm -hmm. You know, I, oh, what, awesome. what I love is I'm eating real food. It's, she doesn't see me drinking shake after shake or only eating split pea soup yes. or cabbage you or fun <laughs> stuff. So exactly. that's the beautiful thing about flexible dieting and macro tracking was all of those fears that you had or some of them of restriction, not being able to enjoy yourself, not being able to go out, mm -hmm. all of those things, it's a non-issue when you do flexible dieting and macro tracking because you just have to plan for it. Mm -hmm. You have to be accountable for it exactly. and you can have it. And I love what you said about wanting that to be reflected in your children because they see everything, mm -hmm. right? And whether we're restricting or limiting or not doing things, it's all in our approach yeah. and how we bring that to the table to them and what we right. teach them about their food, our food, and how we manage those things. Things that are important to us, we always, always track, take care of, and are aware of. And so sometimes we just forget to dial that in. Well, and it was really apparent too when one day I got my daughter home from school and I was like, all right, sweetie, what do you want for lunch? Mm -hmm. And she pretty much rattled off what I have for lunch. That's all. Awesome. She was like, I want a turkey sandwich, <laughs> I want grapes, and I, I want, want 30 grams of pretzel <laughs> <Yeah. things." laughs> I'm like, dang, things. girl, you are on track. <laughs> and, and I was just like, uh, of course you can have yeah. this stuff. It's like, no, no, you can't have my lean cuisine. Yeah. Or, no, no, you, yeah. you can't know, like, this is, you know, she never saw me dieting. She yeah. saw me eating normal, healthy food, and we would go out to eat. So we know that we make the excuses. What was your first step in um, 
making it happen and letting the excuses go and with all the things that you have going on how did you make it happen um i, I contacted you <laughs> well hey <laughs> But well, you know, even right. contacting me, I give you these um, directions or I say do this, mm -hmm. you still have to do that, right? I give lots of numbers to people that they don't do a whole lot with, and then I give numbers to people who they crush it. Mm -hmm. And so that there's a difference between those two roads and how it goes. Mm -hmm. So what what was that for you that was like, here I go, I'm giving it I'm giving it my all. Yeah, I mean it was finding you kind of reading a little bit of information about what this whole program is going to entail mm -hmm. and just losing the fear of failure That's awesome. and just giving it a try. I love and it. the old Steph, the old me, thought that if I wanted to be 130 pounds, yeah. I would need to restrict myself to 1,100 calories. <laughs> Which, <laughs> I'm 1,100. <laughs> and, and, and I was in my ex interview, I'm like, and now I'm 130 and eating over 2,000 calories I know, calories isn't that day. incredible? That's so. <laughs> as a macro coach, it's still, I've been doing this for almost two years. It'll be two years in June. And it still blows my mind. You thought to be 130, you had to eat under 1200 calories yep. and you're eating over 2000 calories right now and you're 130 mm -hmm. pounds yeah and you went from how much i you started out uh eating 14 i think it was like 1435 mm -hmm. calories mm -hmm. it was weird seeing the calorie intake go up and the scale <laughs> go down and i find, i mean i when i contacted krista originally i was like oh if i just lose 10 pounds i'd be happy yeah. and i'd fit into the clothes that i like i'd be yeah down to a, a weight I was in high school, and then all of a sudden I hit 135. I'm like, I guess we'll just keep going. I don't all right. Know. Yeah. And you started at one... I was 155 pounds yeah. Yeah, at my highest, right. and I hadn't seen that number on the scale since I was pregnant with my daughter. Yeah. And uh, I was inching closer and closer to 160. If you could get anyone a little advice about getting healthy and taking the time to take care of themselves, what would it be? What would be your your piece of advice? Um, don't hold yourself back. Stop holding yourself back. You know, you have to live your life too. And if you're not happy with your current situation and how you're feeling, your children will see that in you. Your children will feel that effect. Your husband will feel that effect. So you have to take care of yourself first and foremost to create healthy living around you. Mm -hmm. And by taking care of yourself, obviously you're going to be a healthier person. Yep. You're going to know yourself a lot better. You know, stop hiding. Yeah. I don't know what we're all hiding from. Yeah. You have to fill your cup up first in order to pour into others. If your cup is empty, you have nothing to give. If you're upset and bitter and frustrated or irritated, then that's what you pour into others. And that's yeah. never something we want to pass on to our friends, our kids, our husband. We all have 24 hours in the day. Mm -hmm. And how we choose to utilize those 24 hours, you know, maximize it to your fullest ability. Sure. You know, yeah, we, we all have jobs. Yes, we all have children. And we were running here and running there and you know, catering to yeah. all these different aspects of life, but there is always room for you. Sure. For sure, absolutely. So, since I know that you're a marathon runner and I yeah. did almost die today, <laughs> <laughs> I've not done cardio in like four <laughs> months because I've been in bodybuilding mode. Um, since I know you're a runner, I want to challenge you to a race. Okay. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> and the winner takes all of my kids to ice cream while I watch Netflix for two hours. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. So, <laughs> Wait a second. Are you up for it? Of course. All right, let's do it. You always challenge me and I'm always up for it. <laughs> Buckle in, y'all. It's going to get crazy. All right, you guys. It's on. I've challenged her. Here we go. This is ridiculous. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> are you ready for this race? It's going to be epic. <laughs> All right, who's gonna say it? All right, on your mark, get set, go! <laughs> I want you to take my kids! <laughs> oh my gosh, you're really good at it! <laughs> you're really good at bag hop! Not gonna lie, I had some practice rounds. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was awesome.